Hey there, this is Chef Sean from Big Grove Brew Pub in Solon. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, and thank you for uh, purchasing our Valentine's Take and Make. Uh, we're gonna go through the uh, salmon and winter vegetable risotto today. Uh, for the for the brie appetizer, um, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna do the video of that. Uh, you just want to bake that. Um, at, I believe it's 350 until it's nice and soft, uh, ooey gooey and warm. Uh, and you'll just drizzle that with honey, and then eat it with the warmed up baguette and fresh pears. Um, just spread it on there with a knife or a spoon. Um, for the salmon risotto, uh, we'll go through a couple techniques and uh, you can have a super delicious romantic dinner for you and your partner. All right, so what we're looking at here is the ingredients for the risotto. Um, this is all gonna be coming in your, um, your bag, um, excluding the salt and pepper, of course. You will need a wooden spoon, cast iron skillet if you have one. If not, um, a nonstick skillet will work. Um, this is just the broth for the risotto that's kind of heated up, and then a sauce pot for the risotto. And then last but not least, you'll want to put your oven temperature to 200 degrees. Okay, to get started, I'm preheating my cast iron skillet over medium-high heat. And you want some decently high heat. We're going to sear the salmon off right now. Um, I like cast iron because it develops a really nice sear, really nice char. Okay, now that my pan's been preheating for a couple minutes, I'm going to add in some oil to the pan. Um, I'm using grapeseed oil. You can really use whatever oil that you really like. Um, I use grapeseed oil because it's fairly neutral. And it also, you can uh, cook at a high heat with it. Um, some oils will get too hot, too fast, and you'll end up burning. So I'm going to let this oil heat up until it's what's called a shimmer stage, where it kind of looks like it's waving. Um, and it'll slide easily across the pan. So I'm going to give this a couple seconds. Okay, my oil's heated up. It's starting to, it, can, it slides really easily across the pan and it's lightly smoking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add our salmon uh, we, we cook or we cure in-house uh, with brown sugar and, and uh, salt. So it's already seasoned, so you don't need to add any salt to this when you go to cook it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it this side down, as opposed to this side down, which has the ugly pieces on it from the skin. I'll put it this side down, and uh, it'll come out with a nicer presentation. I'll just lay it in the pan and I'll kind of press down and that, what that does is that it hears the salmon to the pan. You hear that nice sizzle. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to turn down my heat to about a medium because cast iron holds its heat very well. You don't have to go blazing hot the whole time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cook this until it's nice and seared on one side and then we'll flip and we'll finish cooking. And as this is continuing to cook, I like to kind of tilt my skillet and let that oil come back in contact with the, with the fish. It just uh, creates a nice even sear as opposed to like a spotty sear. And so we'll, we're going to cook this most of the way on the one side and we'll flip and we'll just finish cooking. I'm going to be looking for a nice medium rare. And I'm, I'm just going to use tongs to kind of pick it up and look at it. It's starting to get really nice and brown on the one side. So we'll keep it going a little bit. Let it get nice and... Uh, Nice and seared up, some good color on there. You can also use a uh, fish spatula if you have one, or any thin uh, spatula so you can kind of get underneath and check it out. 
Now these are some pretty big pieces of salmon, so they take a little bit longer to cook, nice and thick. And we'll just let these go for another couple minutes. Now the reason I turned my oven temperature to 200 was because I want to hold the fish without cooking it much further. Um, if you do, or if you are a person that likes their fish well done, I would recommend uh, increasing your oven temperature to 350 degrees. And once we go through the, these next couple steps with the fish, I would finish the fish in the oven as opposed to in your in your uh, cast iron skillet because your uh, the outside of your fish is probably would probably get too dark by the time you're done. Let's go ahead and check this fish. I'm gonna slide my spatula underneath, flip it over. You can see that nice sear on there. It's got good good texture. We'll do that with the other side. And you can see these like nice darker spots. That's just the, the 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 reason that I like using cast iron. Is you get this really nice deep golden crust, and it's really gonna it, it increases the flavor. It also increases the uh, contrast with the texture, uh, which is something that as chefs we are always looking for. Makes for a more interesting bite. I'm gonna let these go for about another minute, maybe a minute and a half on this other side. And I'll transfer them to a, a like a, a nice oven proof sheet tray. You, my cast iron skillet could go in the oven. However, it, it is too hot uh, to hold the fish and it would continue to cook that, that surface, which I'm not looking for. So I'll transfer it to a uh, oven safe. You can use a casserole dish or a cookie sheet, something like that. Um, and just place it in your oven and it'll just hold it at a nice low temperature. Um, while we while we cook the risotto. Okay, now that I got a nice sear on the bottom as well, um, I'm just gonna kinda do the same thing and, and with the sides. I'm just gonna, very carefully, obviously, I'll tip it up on its side and then I'll lean it against the side of the pan. And this will allow me to kinda get that same texture on the sides as well. I'm not gonna take very long. Couple seconds on each side. I'll flip it. Just looking for a little bit of uh, sear. Couple more seconds on this side, and then we'll uh, take this fish out into a dish, put it in the oven, and start the risotto. Okay, uh, when you have your fish done to your liking, you go ahead and turn off the heat to your cast iron skillet. Uh, it will stay uh, hot for a long time. So I always have a nice, you know, kitchen towel or uh, oven mitt, something like that that I can move the pan around with. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this fish, let some of the oil come off of it. I'm just using a little eight by eight um, baking dish. Move that pan out of the way into this little Pyrex dish and then right into my oven. I'm gonna go ahead and start the risotto. I just have a little medium-sized sauce pot here. I'm gonna start it at medium heat. I'm gonna let that heat up just for a little bit and then we'll uh, start the risotto. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start the risotto. I have a little bit of olive oil um, in the bottom of this and the reason I'm using olive oil is I want the flavor for this risotto um, as opposed to uh, the, the salmon where we're cooking at a high heat. This risotto is not gonna be cooked at that high of a heat. So we can, uh, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a couple of containers of some winter root vegetables. This happens to be parsnips and uh, daikon radish. Um, it really could be anything, depending on what we have. Um, could be carrots, could be celery root, beets, um, whatever you really like. Um, but we will include some form of root vegetables um, for this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also, we have some minced shallots. We're gonna add that in. We're gonna add in the root vegetables. And then you'll season it with just a little bit of salt right away. And with a wooden spoon, uh, you always wanna cook risotto with a wooden spoon. Um, it just kinda, it's very traditional. It also, 
the spoon reacts with the rice in a, in a way that is kind of abrasive and will uh, coax some of that starch out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this, this is about medium heat on my gas range, I suppose. And I'm going to cook this, I'm going to stir it fairly constantly. Um, I'm looking to really kind of get that flavor from the shallot to kind of come out. You can kind of smell it as you go. Um, and I'm just looking to lightly soften this, these vegetables. I don't want to... I don't want them to be completely soft by the time this risotto is cooked. I want them to still have a bite and have that nice um, kind of, you know, spicy radish, sweet parsnip, root vegetable flavor um, with all the, also that texture that's nice and crisp uh, by the time this is all said and done. And like I said, we'll include, it'll probably be some form of radish or carrots, parsnips, um, celery root, something in that vein. Okay, I've, I've uh, gotten this shallot is, is very, very fragrant. I'm going to go ahead and deglaze this with uh, some white wine. Forgive me if you can't see anymore, but we're going to cook this wine. Uh, uh, we're going to cook the alcohol off. And what you'll do is you'll just you'll just keep stirring a little bit. You don't need to stir as much right now. But we just want that, that wine to reduce because we don't want that sharp alcohol flavor um, in there. It's not particularly pleasant. We just want that nice um, kind of interesting flavor that you can only get from wine. And we're getting there, you can kind of see that it's not completely liquidy. There is still some liquid at the bottom. I want that almost almost to be reduced all the way. And what we've done with this risotto for you is we've par cooked it, um, which means we've, in the restaurant, we took it about 80% of the way. So, because risotto from scratch can take anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes depending on that particular type of rice um, uh, what how you're how you're cooking it any, any number of variables and so what I'll do is so now I got this rice or I got this wine completely reduced I'm gonna add in this par cooked risotto and so the risotto I cooked initially with some more shallot um, a little bit of uh, white wine, some saffron, which is why it's yellow, and uh, um, vegetable stock. Um, so I'm just gonna get this these root vegetables all incorporated with the rice, and then I'm gonna start adding in some of my stock. And I just have this stock in your directions. It says to have this stock kind of heated up. Um, in a small sauce pot and so that's what I that's what I did I just have this the stock on the side and I'm gonna let it kind of kind of just barely cover the rice to where it, it looks like a really kind of thick soup and then we'll let it uh, we'll let it come up to temperature and start simmering so this risotto is starting to simmer. We're gonna keep stirring it. The stirring action is what releases some of that starch from the rice. and will ultimately create a really super creamy um, final product. So what you're looking for is, is rice that has some a little bit of bite left in it. It's called al dente. Um, but you also want it to be have it have it the the starch from the rice almost and with the stock with the broth almost create a, a sauce of its own and then all we have to do is finish it with a little bit of butter a little bit of parmesan cheese um, at this point I'm gonna I'm gonna start to season the risotto with a little bit of salt 
Um, the risotto is not seasoned at all when it com will come to you, so you do need to add salt to it. Um, we do that so that we can control the final, the final product. And that, you know, there, people have varying tastes upon that. I'm, I just cracked a few grinds of black pepper right into my risotto. Um, if you had white pepper, you could use white pepper. Um, I like the flavor of black pepper a little bit better, so that's why I use black pepper. I'm gonna add just a little bit more stock. And just keep stirring. And it, it doesn't take too long because, like I said, the rice is already cooked most of the way. You're just kind of bringing it home, as it were. I'll continue to stir this and we'll and then we'll finish it up and plate it. All right, so now the rice is almost cooked all the way to where we want it. I'm starting to be able to kind of drag my spoon through it and it's starting to stay a little bit. We just got a little bit longer we gotta go. And then we'll just add in the butter and the Parmesan cheese, which is really just gonna make it super creamy, super delicious and nice and decadent. So we're starting to get there. Just a little bit longer. Keep that stirring going. It looks like I'm almost there. I'm gonna maybe give it one more minute and then we'll add the cheese. All right, so we are there with the rice, and what I'm gonna do is just add in the butter, the Parmesan cheese, and we'll just kinda, same, you know, we'll just stir that in, kinda constantly stirring. You always wanna constantly stir when you're incorporating butter and cheese into something, um, so that it doesn't just melt and it'll become greasy. And so what I'm doing is I'm just, I turn the heat off underneath my rice and I'm just cooking this or just stirring this until that butter and cheese is all incorporated. Give it one taste. I'm gonna add just a pinch more salt and then I'm gonna add from your lemon wedges, I'm gonna add I'm gonna squeeze the juice for two of them into there because it's nice and creamy, it's nice and salty, nice and cheesy and buttery. And that lemon is just kind of gonna cut through all of that and really make a, a balanced dish. And that's really good. All right, so now we're gonna plate. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and Divide this risotto amongst a couple of plates, nice and creamy. I want that nice creamy texture. Right in the center, with that nice radish and parsnips in there. Take that piece of salmon right on top and included in your kit we have some minced chives I'm just kind of dot those chives around because they're delicious and serve it with a couple lemon wedges on the side just put over your salmon and there you have it uh, salmon and winter vegetable risotto um, thank you for uh, for, again for buying this and uh, have a great Valentine's Day.